Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the GPD Micro PC, which is a device that looks sort of like a tiny little laptop, but it's really more of a palm top because it is so small you can hold it in one hand or two hands if you want to reach your hands across and use it for thumb typing on the keyboard. You can do uh, multi-finger typing, but the keys are a little too small for that because what we're looking at is a device with a six inch display, measures just about six inches across, and uh, it's got a relatively low power processor under the hood. It's really designed for portability and use on the go as opposed to general productivity. But under the hood, it's got enough processing power to do a lot of basic computing tasks. It's got an Intel Celeron N4100 processor, which is a quad core Intel Gemini-like chip. Uh, it normally runs at about six watts, but the version in here can run at up to 10 watts for better performance. It has four gigs of RAM soldered to the motherboard. You can't upgrade that and it has a 128 gigs of solid state storage, which is actually an M2 card that you can remove and replace if you wanted to. And it's gonna sell for about 299 during a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo, which goes live around uh, February 15th, 2019, should ship a little bit later this year. And the retail price is gonna be about 399. So between those uh, two, 299, 399, that definitely by far makes it the least expensive device that GPD has released to date, and also sort of the weirdest in a couple of ways here um, in terms of sort of its form factor and design. And also if you take a look here, kind of the selling point for this model, aside from the low price tag, is a nice range of full-size ports here. We've got an RS-232 serial port, a full-size HDMI port, two full-size USB Type-A ports, USB 3.0, USB Type-C, gigabit Ethernet, another USB Type-A uh, 3.0, and a micro SD card slot, and then on the front, a headset jack. Uh, now that serial port gives you a little bit of an indication that this is not necessarily just for consumers, although consumers could use it, but this is something that could come in handy for network administrators, field workers, people who just sort of need to do troubleshooting and testing on the go. It's not something that I've tested um, because I don't really have any hardware that needs a, a serial connection, but having all of these other ports really does make it a little bit easier to use this without necessarily having to carry around a USB hub. So for instance, um, say I wanted to plug in an external keyboard, got that. So I want to plug in a flash drive, no problem. Uh, how about some ethernet? We got that as well. And I'll tell you what this is in a moment. We're gonna plug that into the USB type C port. And then finally, let's plug in an HDMI cable. So we've got all of those things plugged in and still have another USB port free in the serial port and the SD card slot. Uh, now I plugged it in and the screen went blank because last time I plugged in an external monitor, which is what I was just doing there, I told it I only wanted to see the external display. I can, of course, mirror the displays as well, but in this sort of usage uh, scenario, what we're looking at is the ability to use this as a sort of desktop style computer. So I've got a touchpad here, a keyboard here, and I can launch applications this way. Uh, say I wanted to open up Windows subsystem for Linux, which I've installed on here. And we've got an Ubuntu window with a bash shell here. Um, we can navigate the directory. We can run top, etc. Now, the reason I plugged in that USB cable is because we can also now use this as a touchscreen display. So I can press and hold for a right click. I can move things around, etc. Or I can go ahead and change the display settings, and let's say I want to duplicate the displays. I could also extend the desktop, obviously, but now what we've got is the ability to see the same thing on both screens. So that's what it looks like with an external display plugged in. And actually, if you go to lilliputing.com and check out the text version of this review, you'll see that I actually wrote most of the that version of this review using this sort of setup where I uh, was able to type on the keyboard, view on a larger screen. Having a six inch screen is great when you're on the go because it is a very small uh, device with lots of ports, as I mentioned, decent functionality, and it weighs just about a pound. It's actually small enough that you could basically put this thing into your pocket if you wanted to. Um, but the keyboard makes typing a little bit difficult and I've got a whole other video that goes into that in detail, but here I'll just show you a couple of real quick reasons for that. Let's go ahead and unplug some of these things. Well, you can leave that plugged in. So 
So uh, let's go ahead and open up LibreOffice Writer. And you can see that with thumb typing, you, you can reach your thumbs across the screen or across here, but there's a couple of weird layout issues. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then the six, seven, eight, nine, zero are above them. So that takes a little getting used to. And that's to make room partly for this touchpad over here on the other side, which is not too hard to use with a thumb, but if you wanted to do things like two finger scrolling, then you do have to lift your hand from it. There's also support for um, using left and right click buttons over here. And if we wanted, we wanted to type something, that's generally what it looks like. Now the problem is when you say something like that, you have to go function O for the apostrophe. What, uh, let's go with I said in quotation marks, and I got that wrong because I hit shift P instead of function mark P. So that's sort of the biggest issue here is that some of the things are laid out a little bit funny because of the fact that uh, it's such a small keyboard and they're trying to make you room for all the keys that you need here. Uh, and because I have to sort of hunt and peck for certain keys like the apostrophe and the uh, quotation mark, I find myself looking at the keyboard. I'm a touch typist when I'm using most laptops. On this, I'm definitely not, and that can cause some problems with speed and accuracy. Um, so it's not something that I really enjoy doing a lot of typing on, but it's a good enough keyboard for if you wanted to do things like just typing in um, URLs, usernames, passwords, basic commands. Uh, so it's the sort of thing where if you're just doing a quick sort of troubleshooting uh, kind of work, you could definitely do that. You can watch videos on it, no problem. You could uh, even play some games on it if you wanted to. Um, so while it's really something that I think is going to make the most sense for people like network administrators, it is something that you could use as a multifunction device. Now, a couple of weird things about this besides the weird port uh, arrangement, it does not have a touchscreen display. And that might not be such a big deal if it were a normal laptop style computer, but on something this size, uh, we're sort of used to smartphone-like displays having smartphone-like functionality. And in this case, not being able to touch the screen or not being able to do anything when you touch the screen is a little bit unexpected. Uh, another thing is that there is no webcam. So if you wanted to use it for video calls or recording video, you can't do that. It does have a microphone. So if you really wanted to, you could use it for recording voice memos or making uh, calls over Skype or something like that. Um, but the, uh, oh, and something else that I should point out here uh, it's kind of hard to see in a lot of videos that I've shot in the past, but I'm going to dim the lights and show you the backlit keyboard. So it lights up, and you can turn it off. On and off. And that's one advantage to shooting videos at night. Uh, the natural light in here isn't quite as nice, and you get a little bit of glare from the light above me sometimes, but Yep, there was some glare, um, but we can look at the backlit keyboard. So um, I think, you know, a lot of geeks have been really interested in this device because of those ports, because of the functionality, because it's small and relatively inexpensive, has the backlit keyboard. And, um, and so I know that it's generated a lot of buzz and excitement. In terms of overall performance, it's one of the slower handheld PCs that I've tested, and you can find some more benchmark information at lilliputing.com. But it, um, it's still fast enough that, as I mentioned, I wrote... Uh, nearly 3,000 word review on this that involved doing a lot of research. I had over a dozen browser tabs open. I did some video editing, and I didn't really run into any serious difficulties doing that. Uh, it also has enough horsepower to play some games. Uh, the first game that I spent a lot of time playing on it was Broken Age, which is uh, sort of point and click. It's not the most difficult thing to play. Uh, but I've also been able to play Psychonauts, although for some reason it seems to be giving me issues. Oh, here we go. I'm not sure that I would want to play something like a first-person shooter on here because A, it's not super fast, and B, it's um, going to be a little bit hard to feel the, the buttons by touch, but you can see the 3D graphics don't look too bad here. It's actually been a while since I played this game, so I don't quite remember what I'm supposed to do. And last time I did it, I think I used a game controller, which you could plug in here if you wanted to. 
But I just want to show you that overall responsiveness seems relatively decent. So that's not bad for something with a relatively low power processor, I'd say. And, uh, you know, like I said, if you wanted to, you could use the terminal window, you could use the bash shell for Linux type commands. Uh, out of the box, it doesn't seem to support Ubuntu as of the time that I'm shooting this video in February 2019. In the future, there might be support. I know that on the crowdfunding pen, uh, on the crowdfunding campaign page, uh, the uh, GPT says that it's going to be supporting supported by Ubuntu Mate. As of right now, if you try to run Ubuntu Mate or other operating systems, you might have problems with the display being sideways because it goes into portrait orientation instead of uh, landscape orientation. But that is hopefully just a software issue that can be resolved in the future. But right now, again, Windows subsystem for Linux works. So if you're okay with running Windows 10, and the version that I'm testing here actually came with Windows 10 Pro pre-installed, it's not bad. Um, so, you know, I think some people would be a little bit put off by the four gigs of RAM, but I haven't run into any serious difficulties, but it all depends on how you use it. If you wanted to play bleeding edge games, this is probably not the right device for you. If you wanted to do, you know, uh, really CPU intensive tasks with a lot of number crunching, then maybe you'd want something a little bit more powerful, but for, uh, relatively light work, it works reasonably well. And battery life is going to be highly variable depending on how you use it. Um, I found that it can get anywhere from, I don't know, three to maybe six hours, depending on usage. When I had it with the screen off, but plugged into an external display and an external keyboard, I was getting possibly even more than six hours of battery life. I, I used it for about three or four hours, and the battery capacity went down to about 40%. Uh, and that was a little bit earlier today. And right now, it's still at about 35% remaining, uh, according to this. The... Um, if you are just using it for gaming, when I played a, an hour of Broken Age, for example, um, the battery definitely went down a little bit more quickly, and under those conditions, I'd say three or four hours probably seems more realistic. And then if you were going to doing, uh, be doing a lot of like 3D gaming, then you'd probably uh, want, run down the battery even more quickly than that. So uh, that is a quick overview of this little computer. You can find more details about it at lilliputing.com. You can also find out what it looks like when you take it apart, because I did do that. I'll show you real quick here that if you take a look at the bottom, you've uh, got a fan. There's uh, plenty of ventilation. We've got an intake and an outtake here. You've got five screws, one, two, three, four, five, that you can remove to open it up. And once you do that, you sort of have to pry open the case, but then you can see that the SSD is replaceable. The RAM is not. Uh, you can also see the 802.11ac Wi-Fi card, which also supports Bluetooth. And um, it's pretty well put together on the inside. It's got a 23, 24 um, watt hour battery. And that's generally what it looks like under the hood. There's also these two little uh, spots up here, which uh, support nuts if you wanted to attach it to a mount. So again, you can tell that even though it's something that GPT is positioning as a potential consumer device, it's also aimed at if you wanted to put it onto a mount for semi-stationary work, you could attach it, make sure that it's not going to fall off and, you know, use it as a sort of terminal that uh, for accessing, I don't know, networking gear or whatever else it is that you might be using in the field or in uh, in various uh, other environments. So it's uh, it's a versatile little device that has a less than stellar typing experience, not the most powerful processor, lacks a touchscreen display, and it occurs to me I didn't even mention that it has a 720p display instead of a higher resolution screen. Uh, it's also got active cooling, but you can actually disable the fan by switching this toggle, which makes things get a little bit hotter. Um, might cause a little bit more CPU throttling, but for the most part, I haven't noticed a huge performance difference. Um, it does have a backlit keyboard, and overall, it's a really nifty device that's kind of hard for me to figure out what I would use it for. If you're going to be doing a lot of typing, I would suggest something like a GPT Pocket. If you're going to be doing a lot of gaming, I'd suggest something like a GPT Win. So I think it's really aimed at you know, networking uh, or IT professionals, and it just happens to be something that because of its low price and versatile uh, set of uh, capabilities might be something that might appeal to some others as well. So you can find out more details at lilliputing.com. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.